Hello and welcome to New World to Go. I'm your host, Redbird, and with me is my good buddy, BDLG. Bordy, we're live, brother. We are. First time. First time live with New World to Go. It feels good, man. Yes, and boy, do we have some stuff to talk about today. Uh, you know, we'll just start off the top. We're just going to have a confession, a little bit of a confession before we get going to start things right. You know, you should always get right with your brother before you, you know, before you lay your head down. And Bordy, I made a mistake last night, man. <laughs> a very big one, man, but it's okay. <laughs> Yo, it paid off because, okay, so what happened is we recorded our episode just like normal, just like we always do Sunday night, so it can be live for you guys Monday night. And I, <coughs> sorry, so I'm getting choked up about it right now, boy. I recorded it in the wrong scene inside of my my uh, Streamlabs. So the whole podcast episode was Redbird talking to nobody because I did not record <laughs> BDLG's <laughs> voice. Uh, I'm just glad you didn't upload it that way. You didn't realize it, and then you just uploaded it, and and it you know went out to all the podcasting platforms of just you talking to yourself, right? Because I nice. I mean I usually tell you that I'm editing, but really I just hit click and send, and then pretend like I'm. Working I know, I out. know. Yeah, I know you do. Act uh -huh. like you work more than you really do. I know your <laughs> tricks, man. I know yeah. your tricks. Well, they, yeah, it's I fine though. We've been podcasting myself. for. Yeah, we've been podcasting for how long now? Going on eight months, I think, uh, mm -hmm. from the ESO Go to podcast and a new world to go, and and that's never happened. So I'll give you a pass. I'll give you one. I mean, there, it's yeah, never to that scale. Yes, I've made mistakes for sure. Uh, we've had some guests. We've had some guests uh, appearances on our ESO to go podcast, and uh, there were some mistakes there that I had to severely pay for later on in editing. So. Yeah, but there wasn't ever one that we had to miss a complete episode. No, so no, that's... definitely not. So there's the first, and I pray that it's the last. All right, so at the top of the episode, we want to give a shout-out to our first ever five-star review on Apple iTunes. If you guys would be so gracious, go ahead, drop us a five-star rating on iTunes. It helps us out a lot as far as the directory goes, and we will read your comment live in the podcast. Now, if you don't want that done, still leave us a five-star review and just mention, hey, don't read this, right? All right, so this is from our buddy, Lotus. He, We know him from the ESO community. Uh, he was our, our uh, another podcasting buddy. His podcast is called Tales of Tamriel. So if you're into ESO to go, uh, or sorry, excuse me, not ESO to go. <laughs> if you're into Elder Scrolls Online, and you need a podcast to listen to, we highly suggest uh, Tells of Tamriel. All right, so here is his review. I followed BDLG and Redbird over from the ESO to, God po ESO to Go podcast because I just like the show style they have. This isn't even a game for me. I'm just entertained by the show and the vibe they got going. So if that doesn't tell you, or if that doesn't sell the show, I don't know what would. <laughs> So thank you very much, Lotus, uh, for listening to us, for constantly supporting us. Uh, he's a great dude. Again, we're very thankful for his support. And uh, yeah, the five-star rating as well. Bordy, you got anything to add? Yeah, no doubt. Just just a big thank you, as you said. I think you covered it. But uh, Lotus is an awesome dude who has who's been supportive of us ever since we uh, you know played ESO. And uh, yeah, so thank you, man. It was, it was very kind of you to leave us that review. Yes, sir. So... As we mentioned at the top of the episode, there was a new article put out today by Amazon Games about New World. It's the first news we've had in quite some time, Bordy. And it is about mm -hmm. settlements. I mean, you both read through this together, separately and together before the episode. And we got a lot of thoughts on this. There's a lot of good information here. It's... it's uh, I mean, really uh, enlightening to see the depth that they're putting in all of these systems. And I think, you know, settlements uh, is a good lead to that because they did release a lot of new information that, that we didn't know before. And it goes into depth about what, what settlements will be like, what the purposes will be like, who can live in them, what they're, you know, how you level them up. And that's right, you're going to level up settlements. So uh, why don't we start off at the top, Bordy? Okay. All right. So making your mark in a turnum, settlements and governance. 
So, uh, staking a claim and working together as a community is a critical step on the path to dominance in New World. Aeternum is divided into district or uh, distinct territories, many of which have their own settlements and forts. To find out more about how you can own a piece of Aeternum, we sat down with lead system designer John Liberto uh, to discuss the ins and outs of settlements of governance in New World. So, okay, from the top, Bordy, governance. Yeah. We had some thoughts about how this would kind of go down, and but I never really put uh, this uh you know to settlements which is basically there's going to be player driven governments as well within these settlements yeah i think it's pretty cool man you're gonna have your governor and i think we'll get to that in a minute but i well we might as well talk about it now i guess the governor is going to be the leader of the of the company that that stakes claim to the settlement which is crazy and then that governor can uh assign what do they call them uh uh, uh consul and they can have as many Council. or as little as they want no, yeah. it's not a council. What do you mean? It's C O N S U L, man. Council is not spelled C O N S U L. Okay. A council. All right. Right. Yeah, you, you consul. I yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Gosh, dang it, Red. Council Red. makes Throw more sense. Vibe, Come dude. on. I'm getting into a deep discussion here, and oh, then my you. My bad, dude. Gosh, dang it, man. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so it's gonna be cool because there can be a lot of different people that can kind of run the run the settlement and th there is a lot to unpack in this in this uh in this article they posted but one thing i think one thing important to note before we get too deep into this is that they will be releasing a video to go along with this post later on we don't have that yet so we're going strictly off of the written post right now and and one thing that that did happen with the last with the pvp one or at least for me anyway is we we what or we read through the post and then there were so many unanswered questions in the post and they released the video and then the video was a lot more informative than the post was uh, and i got a lot more out of that so some of the questions that we have that we're going to mention here may be answered in the video whenever they release it and we may be you know revisiting that again on sunday whenever we talk about it again uh but anyway there's a lot to unpack man i think it's going to be uh, my overall uh uh thought on this is that it's awesome there's there's a few points in here that I don't think are so awesome, and I hope they clarify. But overall, I think all the stuff in this thing is is awesome. Makes me super excited uh, to play this game with the depth that they have gone with the settlements. It's so dope, dude. Yes, sir. So let's get down to to the basics. What is a settlement? A settlement are where players live, congregate, craft, trade, work on town projects, and support their faction through faction missions. Death is not the end in Eternum, so settlements will also serve as a respawn point for players unfortunate enough to have fatal mishaps on their adventures. Bordy, you'll be you'll be respawning a lot in these locations, and now you know. Oh, you just yeah. stole my thunder because I was about to say the same exact not thing dude, about you, one man. Step ahead, brother. Your first, your first, your first stream, like your first time you play this game. I want you to have a death counter up. All right, and dude, it'll we'll be zero for quite yeah. some time because, you know, I can't queue yeah. it. I can't flag for PvP until I'm level 10, dude. <laughs> you just admitted that you suck at <laughs> PvP, dude. No, you I didn't. I'm saying it. I won't even <laughs> die. Why would I die? You just you just said I no, won't no, be no, dying no, for a while yeah, until I'm level gone. 10. Until I, I, mean, I we opt weren't in, for in the PvP. same. That's what you just said. Dude, if we weren't in the same <laughs> company, if we are going to, if we weren't starting a company together, you'd be the first person I'd kill, Bordy. You just would, admitted you suck at PvP. I didn't dude. admit that. Let's move on <laughs> to more won. factual, yes. relevant information. How do you claim a settlement? During the early stages of the game, players must choose between one of the three factions. Um, once you choose a faction, you can create or join a company. When a company is created, it inherits the faction of its creator. Companies can gain control of territories and settlements or forts that it contains. Um, if the territory is uncontrolled, this is a simple, this is as simple as paying for the claim fee at the territory's fort. The territory is already controlled by a company, uh, or if the, uh, territory is already controlled by a company, the territory must be taken through war, which can only occur between companies. That's important. That belong to different factions. Also important. Uh, we'll delve further into war and its other related mechanics in another article. So stay tuned for that. All right. Bordy, there's a lot to unload uh, with this, uh, with this little segment right here, Bordy. So first and foremost, um, 
this is how you claim a settlement. At the very beginning, as the game opens up, you'll just pay a fee, a straight fee, whatever that is, to, to gain control of the territory and everything within the territory. Inside of a territory, it seems like it will be a settlement and or a fort. They've, they've mentioned that forts can be in settlements as well. Um, or I They think, can be inside of them? I thought they were two separate things. Okay, so th that's it. I think it goes on to more detail. Uh, what is the difference between a settlement and a fort? That's next. Okay. So, so we'll, I, we'll clear that up a little bit later. Yeah, I think one of the important things to note here is that we were we were talking in an earlier episode about uh, when you were when you were forced to join a faction, like when you had to choose a faction. And this says right here that during the early stages of the game, players must choose between one of the mm -hmm. three factions. It does not it does not say at character creation, which I found pretty interesting when I read through this the first time. Because I I assumed that it would be a character creation and i guess it's not i bet it's going to be at level 10 whenever you can opt in or out of pvp and then you can join a a company and all that stuff i bet most of that stuff happens at level 10. once you get in and learn the game a little bit then you can kind of choose what you want to do it also gives you time i guess to meet people maybe uh to figure out what faction you want to be a part of i thought that was pretty interesting mm -hmm. um and then uh whenever a company is created it inherits the faction of its creators that's pretty important too so whatever company you join you know you're going to be a part of that faction which makes me wonder if you can change factions later on right like uh, surely not that'd be kind of broken i think if you could but yeah that kind of remains to be seen and obviously there's concerns about factions maybe getting too populated versus the other ones so it'll be interesting to see what they do to kind of combat the zerg mentality uh you know of everybody joining one uh you know one faction so yeah, so yeah, we kind of touched on that a little bit before podcast, but that's a whole other topic. I yeah, think, that you know? is something we should probably wait to cover. <laughs> uh, if the territory is uncontrolled, this is as simple as paying for the claim. We mentioned that. Uh, but if the territory is already controlled, it must happen through war, which can only happen between companies. All right. So to participate in these 50 v 50 sieges, which is the way that you're taking over territory, you have to be part of a company it seems at first but if we read later on then it doesn't appear that way right Bordy? it kind of seems like maybe you don't have to be part of a company yeah i, I i'm not so sure you have to be a part of a company to participate mm -hmm. uh but it's kind of unclear man there's kind of a couple of little contradictory things in here that i think once we watch the video i i bet they're cleared up with the video and i, I hope so uh but yeah i wouldn't think that you I wouldn't think that they're going to force you to be a part of a company to participate in, in content, right? Like that just, that I wouldn't make so. sense to me. Yeah. Especially with the way, especially with the direction the game is headed recently with all of the changes, it seems like they're trying to cater to, you know, a big, a wide variety of audiences. So it seemed to me that you could play uh solo, I would think without any problem, that would be my guess, but I don't know for sure yet. And it, it's not real clear with this article yet either. Right. I, I feel the same way that you do. I think, there will be a viable way to play solo on this game. And I think you, you can, being part of the same faction as the company that's going to war, I think will be important. But as, aside from that fact, I think you could probably, you know, again, join in with a company and defending a territory that you live in. Uh, as we move on through here, more details will kind of arise through that. Okay, so what is the difference between a settlement and a fort? We just mentioned that. Uh, that was kind of uh, uh, an important fact as well. A settlement is where players own homes, craft, refine items, trade, take faction missions, and socialize. A territory's fort is the most um, is the major point of defense for a territory. It is what comes under attack during war, which is PvP, and invasions, which is the PvE zombie type stuff. And it's where players need to go in order to claim an unclaimed territory. So, Bordy, this is interesting to me. And again, I don't know if we put this together yet either. Is that you're not really warring for just settlements. You're warring for an entire territory, which uh, it kind of clears up here. There will be a separate fort and a separate settlement in each territory, right? Cause right. Yep. That's what I'm gathering, too, that the map's going to be broken up into territories. Yeah. And then each territory is going to have settlement fort, et cetera, and then probably resources and whatever. Right. Uh, and then that's that's what you're warring for and fighting for is the territory versus just the settlement, the fort. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Right. Man. So it sounds like. Yep. So that that's important. It, it seems like territories will have both, but maybe not. Maybe there will just be some territories with forts. Maybe they'll just be. Oh, well, I mean, they have to have a fort because that's the only way you can take them over. Right. So we assume I would guess that they probably all territories have both. Uh, I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so how do I become governor? 40. 
Uh, the leader of okay, yeah, yeah. Who, who's gonna be our governor? Right? You, I think it. You, it's gonna be you. <laughs> See, you know, you know, okay. you know what I mean, man. Okay, you're more of a a Joffrey type of person, you know, and I'm more of a Ned Stark, you know. So that's basically that's how I see it going personally, you know. Okay, I don't I don't know what that's. I mean, okay, I don't think that's accurate at all. But okay, <laughs> the leader of a company is called the governor. Initially, a company's governor is the person who created it. Uh, when a company takes control of a territory, the governor of the company also becomes the governor of the controlled territory. All right. Yeah, so, dude, I'm gonna be your boss then. And and here's the here. Telling me. I didn't mean it this way, but the analogy can be very factual because, I mean, you always talk about killing me, dude, and and we both know how the the Joffrey Ned Stark relationship went. <laughs> is but, me without a head. But just a few minutes ago, you said you were gonna you like you were gonna kill me. Like you, I said, you I said would kill you, you if do. we weren't in the same company. Yeah. But we're going to be in the same. Yeah, but then you said you stuck at PVP, so then you realized you, you wouldn't be able to. <laughs> I didn't say that. Moving on. What can you do as a governor? Ultimately, the faction that a company belongs to is the true ruler of a territory. Companies act as a proxy for the factions they are a part of. As a governor, you'll be uh, your responsibility is to maintain control of your territory for your faction. You're also responsible for upgrading and maintaining the quality of life in your settlement by starting town projects that result in settlement upgrades when completed. Uh, dues in the form of territory upkeep must be paid to your faction your company is a part of. In order to pay this upkeep, the governor can adjust taxes and fees in their settlement so that travelers, residents, travelers and residents help to pay the upkeep as they craft, trade, and live in their houses. Uh, they also can make their settlement more desirable to own a home in by focusing particularly on upgrades uh, for particular types of players think that's awesome dude. yeah the the, the in depth the they're, they're going a lot more in depth with with this than i thought they were going to to be honest i knew there was going to be some like taxes and systems in place but then in this screenshot right here i know the listeners can't see it but there's a screenshot uh on the post and it has payrolls on here which is going to be interesting to see how that plays out apparently you can pay pay citizens of the of the settlement somehow um i'm not sure how that's going to work but it has payrolls on there and then people are getting paid out which is pretty cool. And that screenshot's pretty, pretty interesting, I think. It shows the territory upkeep, the taxes and fees and payrolls, and the the amount of depth they're adding to this, to this uh, this whole governor and, and consul thing is dude, it's really, really cool. It's gonna, it's gonna have there's gonna be some uh some pretty cool interactions between companies with all this stuff happening. I think it's gonna be really, really neat. Yeah. So, okay, so here's another important part of the leadership within a uh, territory, and that is the consul. A consul is a governor's second in command. A company can have as many as or as few consuls as it wishes. Consuls have also all the same permissions and powers of the governor of the company and the territory they control. Ultimately, the, a consul can do the things a governor might need to do in the governor's absence. Being a governor can be a demanding role uh, to play in New World. The consul rank is, is in a company is a way for the governor to share some of the responsibilities with the company members that they trust. Okay, so these are basically I would I, I mean the best comparison we have as far as you know other games goes. These are this is basically your your uh, officers, right? To some extent, yeah. They yeah. seem to have more power than maybe a, an officer would in a different game. Yeah, yeah. You want me to read you the definition of consul since you thought it was a council? Uh, no, Maybe please don't. You real quick? No, let's not waste yeah, yeah, I'm going time, to, okay? I'm that going to. a simple mistake. Yeah. <laughs> okay. An official appointed by government to live in a foreign city and protect and promote the government's citizens and interests there. Boom. Yeah, see? Perfect. <laughs> uh, okay. You learn something new every day, man. Yeah. That's, that's what happens when you hang around, you know? That's what happens when you hang around me, right? get smarter okay uh what and how can you upgrade your settlement a settlement's crafting and refining stations can be upgraded upgrading these stations enables higher quality and more powerful items to be crafted by the players that spend time uh or spend the time there additionally a territory's lifestyle buffs and fort upgrades 
are controlled by the governor. Lifestyle buffs are powerful long-term bonuses for things like crafting and combat that only apply to your territory's residents. Okay, so I want to move back just a tad, uh, Bordy, because it says that, uh, you know, that um, adventurers or travelers that move through your, you know, through your territory will help pay for your, your taxes by, we assume, commerce or whatever. Do you think there'll be, like, ends? You know what I mean? Will, will there be places for these travelers to stay or to, like, live short term? I don't know, man. That's a good question. Like to rent out a room instead of like having a house there, maybe to rent out a room or something to, but how would that work? Would they have storage there or I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know what the benefits of having like a rented room would be, but, but, uh, that that's kind of interesting to think about. That would be pretty cool. I think if there was something like that in the game. Right. And, and what, and there's some interesting details as we move through this too, about, uh, people in different factions living within a different factions, town and we'll get to that uh soon yes yes so i think with that whenever we get to that it's important to keep this this part in mind that that lifestyle buffs are powerful long-term bonuses for things like crafting and combat that only apply to your territory's residents so just remember that part whenever we get down to the other part all right so here's how they define residents residents are people who own houses in your settlement if a player does not own a house and a settlement, they will not receive the territory's lifestyle buffs. Like the other upgrades, lifestyle buffs are active through town project or activated but through town projects set by the territory's controlling company. Okay, so the people that control the territory, which uh, will be a company and a governor and, and their consul, uh, we'll get to choose what buffs are present within that uh, territory. So that'll be very interesting because whatever territory you own will obviously have, or I, we assume will have some kind of benefit, whether, you know, based off of the location. So not all uh, territories will have the same, you know, uh, location uh, benefits, right? So maybe if you're close to the ocean, maybe you get, you know, a bonus to fishing, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so this is cool because now you're not only are you, is your location going to play a big factor in what your territories like you know life buffs and styles are and lifestyles, but also uh, the company which owns it uh, will have a big say or the say in what uh, buffs you'll get. Yeah, very cool, man. I love I love all of that. It's gonna that's that's awesome. That's the kind of depth that I think you know that I think will will. Uh, make the game unique and and make the game enjoyable and a lot of fun for a lot of people i mean that's those are some pretty cool mechanics to me man i like that stuff for sure dude i i mean honestly I and mean, we have a little bit more but i i was thoroughly impressed uh when i read this today on the amount of detail they're placing just in this one um you know this one gameplay loop which is just basically player housing but it's very very detailed in new world and and I know there's a large group of people that enjoy player housing and MMOs, and and I think New World's kind of taken it a step above uh, what we're used to as far as MMOs go. Yeah, I agree. All right, so what are town projects? Town projects are large-scale activities players can work on together to upgrade their settlement. Town projects require a significant amount of effort and investment from not only the controlling companies, but also the players that call the settlement home. Town projects are activated by a settlement's governor or one of their consuls. Uh, when a town project is activated, players in the town can take missions that progress the project towards completion. Uh, kind of sounds like quests to me, right? These missions, quests. Yeah, basically, it looks like down there. There's a screenshot of this too, and it looks like you it, like acquire so many silk or so many ingots or so many whatever, and you I guess you probably take them to this to your back to your settlement and drop them into a you know some kind of some kind of storage or something and then it uh, helps upgrade your your forge or whatever you're trying to do right yes um so these missions and you can find all these we're referring to a lot of like pictures and screenshots and stuff you can find them at newworld.com they're posted there uh, i would assume uh if you wait long enough they'll be on studioloot.com as well for you guys to enjoy there if you, if that's your preference, uh, so these missions award XP and currency along uh, among other things, and more importantly, they advance the town project. For example, let's say you want to upgrade your settlement's forge. 
uh, which will enable weapon and armor crafters to create higher quality arms and armor for their adventures. To do so, you will activate the Upgrade Forge Town Project, and then you, members of your company, and anyone else that lives in town can work on them together to complete the project. This is, dude, the amount of, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Basically, there's going to be a lot of planning involved with with creating, uh, you know, a very successful settlement, right? You uh, you will be pushing through quests as a like, unified force. So it'll be important to, you know, to work together with your with your uh, company to make decisions on how you want to advance. Do you want to be a, a warring uh, faction? Do you want to be, you know, a, a big crafting town or a big commerce town? Like all these decisions are going to be really big towards, uh, you know, your play style and, and what your company's goals are. Yeah, but those are set by the governor, though. So, so the governor basically, the governor and the and the consuls are the ones that set the tone of of what they want the settlement to be, though, right? So, right. then it takes everybody else working together to achieve those goals, which is cool. But like the governor is, so this is what's cool, right? The governor. So, say you have, say I'm the governor there, and I want this to be just a a, a combat town, right? So we're working towards just getting weapons and and armor and getting geared out. Well, then if somebody comes and takes over our our territory and there's a new governor, well, then that governor could have a completely different idea of what he wanted to do with the settlement. And so the residents there, their 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 buffs and the way that the settlement operates is going to be completely different uh, because he's going to have different a different way of of putting together town projects and running the city and running the settlement and what the taxes are going to be like. And it's going to be crazy, man. It's going to be nuts. So, yeah. So if you're a citizen there and you like the way things are going, then, you know, it's important for you to fight for, for to, to keep it that way. That's really awesome. Yeah, I like it. that's dude. There's going to be so many interesting stories about, you know, different governors and different companies ruling different territories mm-hmm. in different ways. And, you know, if, again, like you said, if, you know, if you have someone move in there and start changing rules and, and you know, and everything like that. It's gonna be awesome to see the player base migrate throughout the server, you know, on the map throughout, you know, war and different changes. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so here's a little bit more details on how that might work. Each, uh, how do a, how does a settlement level up or down? Each time a town project completes, the settlement levels up. Settlements begin to level down when upkeep is not paid to the controlling faction, or if players fail to. Repel a corrupted invasion, which is the PVE stuff. We'll dig into corrupted invasions more deeply on our roads ahead uh, towards closed beta. So, yeah, dude, it can level up and down. We're not sure exactly what happens when it levels all the way down or levels past the lowest level. Uh, But it's interesting to think about, you know, again, leveling up a settlement. What happens? Does a settlement grow in size? Does it get more, you know, opportunities for commerce? You know, just build, you know, more buildings, more player housing. It's going to be awesome to see what they do here. Yeah, without a doubt. There's a lot of things that can come of that. And I, the the corrupted invasions are pretty intriguing to me, man. I, I'm I'm more much more of a PvP person than a PvE guy. But the, the corrupted invasions, I think, are going to add a whole new element to everything. Um, you're going to continuously have to fight them off. And, and you're right. We don't know what happens if we fall. Uh, to the lowest level yet what if you could lose your settlement from a corrupted invasion right like that's that's pretty crazy Uh, i don't know if that'll be a thing but that would be nuts if you could yeah that would be really cool maybe it just falls in and then it opens it back up to paying the fee things like that can you know uh, i could see being also very interesting yeah, or either it's taken over by them, and then the next people have to come in and clear it out of the corrupted to take it over. That that'd would be, kinda, be that'd cool, be kinda, dude. Yeah, yeah that Walking would... Dead type stuff. That would be sick, man. <laughs> All right, so how do I join a settlement? While you can use the services of any settlement, you join one by purchasing a house there. Anyone can live in any house in any settlement, regardless of which faction they are in or which company that currently controls the territory. This is a lot, this is a lot to digest. So we'll we'll just stop there for now. Um, this is I mean we talked a little bit about this before the podcast. This is going to create a lot of interesting circumstances, Bordy. The fact that you can live in a settlement regardless of any faction or what faction they can 
currently controls it and runs it. Yeah, this is very confusing to me. I I love this entire post. I was reading it and I was getting incredibly excited reading it, reading it. And I was like, man, this is awesome. The whole thing is awesome. And then I get to this part and I was like, whoa, whoa. It's like pump the brakes for a second here, man. What what just what did I just read? And I had to reread it a couple of times to, to like really see that it said what what I thought it said. And uh, this is one of those things where I think we have to wait for the video to come out because I, I I would imagine the video will clarify this a whole lot more and they'll probably explain this a little bit more in depth. At least I would I would hope so. But as as of right now, you know, we talked about this a little bit before. I I am personally a little confused on the whole faction system anyway. Like I'm not real sure why this game even even needs factions. To be honest, I don't know why it's just not a a a company uh thing where it's company v company and I, i'm i'm really confused about why they need, need factions and that this this statement confuses me even more about what why factions are even a part of the game at this point i i really don't understand and i and i think it's just because we have lack of information right i think once we get more information about it we'll understand and we'll see how it all fits together but as of right now i'm super confused and i don't know why i i don't understand why it doesn't matter what faction you're in like because up at the top <laughs> you know up at the top i'm going to read this one this one section if i can find it real quick uh okay here it is what is a settlement settlements are where players live congregate craft trade work on town projects and support their faction through faction missions so if you're living in somebody else's settlement in another faction settlement are there going to be missions for opposing faction settlements in settlements like that doesn't make sense to me man why i don't understand that part dude so i'm i'm really looking forward to some clarification there because i'm super okay confused. so here here's my thoughts and, and the next sentence kind of confirms it okay so if the territories change hand the residents of a settlement are generally unaffected aside from the changes to taxation upgrades and lifestyle buffs in the new controlling company might make so we've mentioned that before as it trains leadership the rules and the taxations and everything will change but what's important is as you've chosen your player housing, maybe again, you're a player and you like to live in the mountains or you're a player and you want to be like a seaboard type of person, your house will not change, but the the controlling faction and company will. So I think it's a, I think it's a, a way to kind of, you know, kind of maintain some kind of, you know, location as far as where your player lives and everything like that. What can be interesting and what I could see them doing is maybe it makes it possible for as you're as you're going throughout your time in New World, maybe you can change factions, man. Because that that's what makes sense to me here. Is maybe as the territories, you know, move around and are, you know, changing hands and factions and companies, maybe you can defect to a different faction. You know what I mean? And that 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 kind of adds a whole nother uh you know, kind of interesting layer to all this settlement stuff is because, you know, again, like it's like countries or, you know, something like that where, you know, if you don't like the way a territory is being ran or a settlement's being ran, you can either up and move or the opposite. If maybe you do like the way the settlement is being ran and you're like, I'm defecting to this faction, I'm joining this company and I'm going to help this territory succeed now. You know what I mean? There could be interesting... Uh, stuff and, and it really reminds me of a of a game that I always like love hearing stories from and it's it, Eve Online, and all those stories of like years of planning for backstabbing and treachery. If they can create some kind of uh, atmosphere where stories like that are bred, it's gonna be a lot of fun, dude. A lot of fun. I, I mean, I I agree. I, I see that to an extent that it would be cool in some situations to be able to change factions, but I also see that causing a lot more problems than it would solve. Like I, changing factions is one of those things where it's like, okay, if this faction, it's like a bandwagon type of thing, right? Like, why wouldn't you just join the winning faction, and then everybody just just it would be like a snowball effect, and then the 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 fairness that they've 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 talked about before. The whole reason they added the opt-in PvP and the 50 v 50 siege battles basically instanced siege battles. Uh, they're not technically instanced, but you know nobody else can join, so basically instanced. So whenever you have the 50 v 50, 50 siege battles, they want them to be fair, which I'm all for that. I like fair fights. I would rather fight out even even open world PvP. I'd rather fight somebody that's going to fight me back than just go gank a gatherer. It's 
not fun to me. I want the competition. So, so if, if, if you can just change factions, that kind of takes away from, from the fairness, right? The fairness aspect they're trying to lean into with the opt-in PVP and everything else they've done. If you can just change factions, then everybody's just going to be bandwagon on one faction, man. And then we're going to have overloaded factions and then it's going to, it's going to, uh, it's going to be rough. Right. Like I, I don't, so there, there's got to be systems in place. I, I don't know what they are. Again, you know, we don't we don't have all the details. So it's just like, you know, it's a, just a conversation to be had. But until we know the details and we don't. So it's interesting to talk about. But I I, I know they're going to put in something right. Like they you mentioned before stream, uh, you know, they have they have a they have a huge team. Right. They, they're thinking these things through. They, they they have thought about these angles. I just I don't know what their solution is. And I'm 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 really anxious to see what what it's going to be. There are there are a hundred ways where they can make it, you know, benefits and like you know uh, debuffs or some sort of being part of a faction that is uh, you know overrunning uh, the server. And also there is a big aspect to a lot of players that kind of want to be the underdogs. So maybe that will cause you know some certain players to defect into a different faction just to be part of an uprising. And stuff like that. It'll be interesting to see. I know that they have plans, and uh, and obviously they're not in this particular article, but but I do I do uh, think that you know there will be ways to balance uh, the three way war, and, and there almost always is in these type of games. So uh, it'll be cool to see what they have planned, and if it's anything as creative of what they did with player housing, then I really I'm excited to hear about it for sure. Uh, so Bordy, we were, let's see, we'll have a lot of information on player housing and future development blogs, whether it's to aspire to be a governor, a highly valued citizen is simply wandering adventure. Settlements are a place where you want to call home and fight to protect. So that it seems again, like there's going to be some benefit to fighting for where you live, you know, no matter what faction you play for, which is interesting. Governors are the leaders of companies and rulers of territories. They are they all they are in the unique position to be able to shape their dominion and the lives of the players who call it home. They can be a representative of the people, or they can rule with an iron fist. Which another it kind of foreshadows another type of system where you can just be heavy with your taxes and <laughs> and, and dude, what if you can't move out? You know what I mean? What if you yeah, just like being to. oppressed? You know. <laughs> Like this guy's taxing you at like a massive percent and there must be no way to move out or maybe you can't afford to move out. So then you're just like, you know, then you're stuck. Yeah, yeah dude, yeah, well. it's going to be awesome. I, this article has me stoked about, um, again, I was already excited about the game, but, but this particular detail that they're placing in player housing, dude, it's going to be awesome. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to see what, what people do and the stories that come out of all this. So. I agree. Yeah. Overall, my take on this thing was awesome. I, I I loved it. I just had a few questions about it, but I think I think it's awesome. Yeah. Overall, it's going to be fun. Yes. All right, Bordy. So we're going to close out this episode with addressing some questions we've gotten through Reddit, uh, Discord, etc. about the podcast, because I know that you guys kind of, you know, we've gotten a lot of uh, good um, feedback on the podcast, but we do want to address some questions uh, that uh, other listeners have asked us about. Uh, so again, uh, our intentions for new world to go is to be a weekly podcast and that, and we're going to, we're going to do that all the way up through, uh, you know, this period where there isn't much news going on, or there's like a slow drip of news going on, uh, all the way through beta, closed beta and into launch and, and beyond. Okay. So, uh, it is a weekly podcast. I know we did miss yesterday. Uh, but uh, look, dude, we were we were uh, rewarded for I was rewarded for my mistake, uh, and we got some news today, which we both thought was a a very big possibility, uh, given the fact that nothing dropped last week. So, okay, so here's some questions, Bordy, and you can help me answer these. Uh, so again, uh, why why are we doing episodes when there are no news, Bordy? So. We do episodes. Number one, we enjoy podcasting, right? Yes. Sir. So we just we enjoy it. We enjoy creating content. We enjoy this this medium of of podcasting. That's number one. But we we also we don't we want to create podcasts that are relevant. Obviously, we don't want to just ramble on whenever there's not any news. But at the same time, it's important to us to be consistent with our podcast. We want to be here every week so that you know you can you can count on this this podcast being here every single week, even when there isn't any news. And, 
you know, I'm going to I'm going to dip into Red's point just a little bit because he was talking about uh, and, and he made a fantastic point. And I, I'm just going to I'm, I'm going to steal his thunder, I think, because th- we're only in this stage of the game once. Once the game releases, there really isn't a whole lot of speculation left because we'll know what's happening. But right now. It's fun to just speculate. So whenever there's not any news, we might as well have a good time speculating and talking and discussing about the game and what we want it to be and what we think it's going to evolve into. Um, so those are going to be those that when, when it's slow news, that's the type of episodes we're going to put out. So we just we think it's important to be consistent uh, every week. And that's what we plan on doing. And we, we enjoy doing it. So we're going to continue to do it. And, and hopefully you guys will, will stick it out with us until, you know, until there's tons of tons of things to talk about every week. Right. So, and then this is another question. I'll kind of address this and, and then we'll let you guys go. Basically what's happening is, uh, generally in, in our podcast, we will be covering what's new or uh, just like tonight, uh, some news to help you guys keep up to date as far as like the podcast medium goes, helping you guys on your way to work or at work or wherever you want to listen to this, stay up to date with the news with, with new world. Uh, also, we'll talk a, lo- a lot as the game goes live about our experiences and, and kind of what we're doing in game uh, with our company and all of that. Uh, but so then, you know, don't be we do. We are speculating now. We're, we're putting in a lot of our opinions and we, we tend to do that from time to time. But this is primarily, uh, again, a podcast to, to cover New World for. Uh, so as we move through uh, beta and as information becomes more available to us. We'll be keeping you guys up to date. That's our intention is to, to, to stay in your ears weekly uh, with relevant information about New World. So uh, if you do have any questions uh, further than these that we haven't addressed tonight, go ahead and contact us. Go to studioloot.com, click on the contact tab, and you can you can send us a direct message. Also, go you can email us at studioloot at yahoo.com. Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys. Again, if you wouldn't mind, leaving us five star rating on on iTunes and and there we can, we can communicate you through that medium as well. Uh and that about does it Bordy for the questions we have and the podcast. Uh Bordy, why don't you tell people where they can find you? Yeah, dude, you can find me over at twitch.tv slash BDLG on Twitter at the BDLG on YouTube at the BDLG and then I'm creating content over at studioloot.com and along with this article the the article that I posted over on studioloot.com, the everything we know about New World up to this point article, will be updated with this information very, very soon, along with some more content that's gonna be that's gonna be posted over there. So go check that out. Yes, sir. And I'm Redbird with a Y on Twitch and YouTube. You can also find me at studioloot.com. On Twitter, I'm I, I am Redbird. Uh guys, uh check us out live. We're recording the podcast live now. We're gonna be putting those on studioloot.com. Uh, we are over here on my Twitch page. Uh, that might change uh, in the future, but for now, uh, we're recording here. Uh, that way, Bordy gets me banned on Twitch and not him. That's the plan, anyways. Is so I can't stream New World when it's launched, and then Bordy will take over. So, uh, yeah, plays, bro. Yeah, I mean, what a governor. Do you guys really, you know, what a governor? <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> you roll you're, with you're, the <laughs> roll with the heavy hand, man. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. We really appreciate it. Uh, We hope you guys have a great week. We'll be back in your ears next Monday with another episode of New World to Go. But until then, uh, we hope for more news until then. Right, Forty? Yeah, I hope so. (laughs) If not, we're going to be here anyway. Yeah, we'll be here. All right, guys. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.